Hello everybody, it's Andy here from A Media Games. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up cloth and interactions with the character mesh and movable objects in your scene. There's been quite a few changes in the background. I know a lot of people won't care about this part of the video, it's fine. But there's been quite a few changes in the background to Unreal Engine, which means that some of the functionality was moved um, into logic in the background that the cloth is kind of looking for. So let me show you how. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to modeling mode. I'm going to go to box and we're going to create a box, leave as default settings, drag it into your scene, place it, click accept. Now we're going to click on here, our thumbnail for our stack mesh to open up our stack, uh, our stack mesh window, our edit panel. And in here, we're going to scroll down and change this to project default. Then we're going to go to collision, add a box a simplified mesh around this for collision. Click save and close. And then we're going to go into our level. Now, if we click on show and collision, you'll see that this mesh now has collision. You can see this, this orange kind of goldy orange line going around. This is now the collision mesh ar around collision, collision tongue twister, the collision mesh around our um, actual cube mesh itself. So let's turn that off and we're going to create a uh, plane. So instead of doing the method where people subdivide in Blender and import it, we're going to go to rectangle. We're going to set subdivisions to 100, depth subdivisions to 100. So these two is 100 and set it to 200 width and 200 depth. Once you've done that, click and then click accept. Bring it up, rotate it. And there we have our cloth panel. Now we just need to paint it so it actually acts like cloth. Now we're gonna go and browse to asset. We're going to right click, go to convert to skeletal mesh. You can leave as default, click convert. It might take a few seconds. Once it's converted this mesh into a skeletal mesh, we're then going to go and open that skeletal mesh. So let's delete this, grab our skeletal mesh, drag it into our scene, rotate it, bring it up, and then we're going to open this up. So let's double click, and then let's tidy these windows a little bit. Okay, so in here, we should have an option called Activate Cloth Paint. Click on that. And then you're going to click on the mesh, right click, create clothing data. You're going to click create. Then you're going to click here where it says clothing data that we just created. This will enable us now to paint this, which is going to give us our um, cloth physics. So anything that you paint will be cloth. Anything that's unpainted will be like an anchor point. So let's drop the size down slightly to let's do 50 so anything that we paint like so is going to be cloth and anything unpainted will be an anchor point so these corners aren't painted so that's be where the cloth will hang so let's deactivate cloth paint give it a couple of seconds once we've done that we're then going to click on our mesh, right click, and then we're going to apply the data that we just painted to our mesh. This will then simulate the cloth once it's assigned the data. As you can see, it's now simulating that cloth. Click save, go back into our level. We need to simulate to see which way the cloth falls, which is fine. And then we want to place this above our box like so. Let's rotate it a little bit and then click simulate. And you'll notice that nothing happens because we need to enable a couple of settings. So we're going to click on our cloth panel. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to scroll all the way down and then we want to enable collide with environment. And then if we do simulate, you'll notice that it collides with the static mesh. Now this is the part that's been tripping up a lot of people. 
and including myself because I didn't realize at first that the cloth was looking for um, a baseline static mesh to collide with. It wasn't necessarily looking for a static object. It was looking for some logic to state that the mesh was static in some way. So if we go into our mesh, this one here, and we scroll to movable, so we didn't have to scroll much, just at the top. And if we change that to movable, watch what happens. The cloth will fall through and it won't collide with the um, mesh anymore. So what we have to do is we have to click on our static mesh, our cube, scroll down until you see this panel here, which is our collision presets. And we're gonna change this to custom. Once we've changed it to custom, it will enable us to change some more of these settings. We can leave it to block all, but what we need to do is change our object type. Now this doesn't necessarily do anything visually, but it's kind of changing its what it's recognized as by the cloth. So if we go to world dynamic and change it to world static and then simulate, you'll notice that the cloth is now simulated and it's colliding with our movable object. If we grab this and move it, we've got a funny thing going on here. Let's try, let's try that again. Let's move this over here, rotate the panel, click simulate, and now move our cube it's deciding that it doesn't want to work. Okay, let's enable something called CCD, which is constant collision detection. It's not always recommended to use this. It's designed to make sure that it can register the hit of a fast moving object like bullets and stuff. Let's do that. Okay, let's check to make sure we did that right. Yep, okay, so let's do simulate. Let's move our object up and across. And it's still not wanting to work, but if we move this over and click simulate, it will react with our cube. So the cloth is working, just not quite as expected. Let me quickly fix this up a little bit. Let's see if we can get that to register the hit. Don't make me out a liar now, come on. World static, custom enabled. Yeah, that's all correct. Let's just make sure that we've got the right settings. Let's do force collision update. So it won't react to the player. You'd have to change something there. Let's do simulate once more. Let's move this up. There we go. So what's happening now is now detecting a block. So just make sure you put force uh, collision update on. And there you can see that it is reacting. Now you can get a better cloth than this. I just rushed the paint. So don't rush the paint job. Make sure you do it correct and you'll get a way better result. But just for the tutorial sake, this is perfectly fine. Now as a bonus, rather than just ending the video here, what we can do is if you go to, again, this this is just a method. So there's always gonna be haters, but this is just a method to get it working. So maybe some people want it working as quick as possible. This is what I've figured out so far. So if you go into your third person character and go to add, what you can do is you can add a sphere <clears throat> and if we shrink this down and elongate it like you're putting a character inside of an egg a very strange looking long egg so so it covers the player it's janky as hell I know I'm gonna get some funny comments maybe some strange DMs but if you do, <laughs> what the hell, Mr. Eggman, if you put the player in this egg and then go to render and then at the top here we do hidden in game and we also then change this to uh, custom, 
overlap and then static. If we compile this, we should be able to, there you go, get the character to react with the cloth. Now again, change this to get it to look better and suit your needs. I haven't fully experimented with getting the perfect result. This is just my findings from trying to figure out a way because loads of people have been asking. So I hope it helps you in some way. Hit the like button if you like the video, subscribe to help support the channel, which helps me get more videos out there, helping people learn and share it with people that need to learn as well. It helps. So thanks very much for watching. Have a great weekend and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye for now.